Hey, what's going on guys? So I wanted to go ahead and uh, make a video today now that I have some time uh, and talk about the reliability of my car. Basically, my car has, you know, 50, a little under 55,000 miles on it now. And I wanted to go ahead and talk about some of the things that I see a lot of uh, people, uh, especially people that are trying to get into a GT350, that uh, they tend to avoid these cars just because there is a lot of issues out there and everything you hear on the internet is basically true. So I wanted to just, uh, you know, bust that myth uh, because my car has been nothing but great. I'm maybe, maybe I am the uh, one out of the 100 cars who does, doesn't give me any issues. But I, then again, I do put a lot of emphasis on not only the uh, not only the maintenance of the car, but I also like to check other things that now uh, that I technically I'm not supposed to be checking that often. But I just consider them another part of my maintenance uh, items that I that I do regularly on the car. So, but first, before we get into too much into the video, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys a couple of little things that I've done to the car ever since the last video. Uh, so, uh, you guys might have noticed these quick latches that I went ahead and installed on the car. These 2015 to so 2017 Mustangs, uh, they're notorious for breaking the clips on the front bumpers. And I've actually taken my front bumper quite a, off of the car quite a bit of times now. So, I had one, the uh, passenger side, it was completely broken. And then the driver's side was starting to uh, go ahead and break all the way. So, I went ahead and just installed these. Uh, so technically you just push the middle and then it releases the bumper. So it's it's a lot easier I'll go ahead and put the link in the description where you can pick one of these up and then if you come to the front now uh, I went ahead and installed the Shelby the white Shelby letters to match the car. I think they look really really good um, at some points I d debated if I should get them or not, but you know, I'm glad I did finally they do give it that um, You know look where it just stands out a little bit more and then uh, another thing that I wanted to go ahead and address today was going to be the uh, the hood vents. So these hood vents are actually meant to go on a Mustang GT. These are not the uh, GT350 ones that they sell you in the, in, on their website from race louvers. Uh, but the problem is that I didn't want to go with the GT350 ones because they are so big. And, you know, my car being a street car, I didn't want it to be something that was just gonna allow a whole bunch of water to get in there all the time. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you why I positioned my uh, my louvers here instead of somewhere farther up ahead on the hood. So somebody in the comments was asking me about the water getting in here. And I mean, and, and then also my engine air filter getting any water. But I went ahead and uh, positioned them farther back enough so that they're right on top of the strut tower uh, and then they're just, I went ahead and cut just behind where the uh, air intake seals with the hood. As you can see right here on this line is where it seals with the hood. So there's no water getting in here whatsoever. And if there's any water that gets in here, it's okay because it's just gonna evaporate and nothing really happens. And uh, well, that's it for the, oh, actually I went ahead and did one more thing, which I'm gonna show you guys inside the car. Uh, this is something that I've had for a while, but I never really wanted to put it back on. I went ahead and took it off because it was so droney. And since I had the MBRP exhaust on the car with the cat deletes, uh, it just, it was, the drone was just insane. So I went ahead and put it back on. This is gonna be my rear seat delete. I did take a video on that. I might go ahead and uh, show you guys later on if y'all wanna see the installation. But this is by, I believe SVE is the, company who makes them they sell it at lmr.com and it saves you a little bit of weight you know nothing crazy but uh another thing is that a lot of guys they do the rear seat deletes on these cars and they don't realize that if you're taking the rear seats you might as well take off the rear uh, seat harness for the seat belts because those also weigh a little bit alrighty so getting back to the topic of the video talking about the reliability of a Shelby GT350 and the Voodoo engine so the number one thing that you're gonna wanna do, I mean, you're gonna wanna treat it like every other car. And what's the key to making a car last you a long time? For one, you don't beat the shit out of it every single time you get in it. Uh, you're gonna wanna take care of your stuff. I mean, you're not gonna be doing donuts everywhere you go. You're gonna drive it like a grown-up. Uh, another thing is, 
obviously the maintenance intervals maintenance intervals what i mean by that is constantly doing your old changes not exceeding you know me personally and i'm going to be talking about my case i like to do my oil change every 5,000 miles so every time that i hear somebody say oh you gotta do every 2,000 miles i i no, you don't i mean you the the oil is still okay until 5,000 miles if you're using full synthetic and in my opinion it's overkill if you're trying to do an oil change every 2,000 miles for one it's going to be super cost effective uh, it's not going to be cost effective i'm sorry it's going to be very very costly and then two uh you're i mean throwing away oils that are still okay for another 3,000 miles um, another thing is going to be what type of oil you should use you're gonna you can talk to one guy here or one guy over here they're gonna say completely different things but what does the manufacturer who has invested millions of dollars developing an oil for this type of vehicle is gonna tell you in my opinion if there's somebody that you should listen to is the manufacturer because they've invested so much money into telling you hey you should use this type of oil so that way your engine runs good you should use this type of weight so you shouldn't be messing with for one you shouldn't be messing with the weight and two it's always a good idea to be uh, sticking with what Ford recommends in this case that's what I've been running on my car and I haven't had any issues the car like I said it's got almost 55,000 miles um, another thing that I wanted to talk about not just the oil is gonna be checking your oil a lot of people are gonna tell you oh yeah my shell be uh, burns you know a quart every 500 a thousand miles my car has not burned a single uh, maybe half a quart every 5,000 miles and this is seeing uh, you know taking it on autocross taking it on occasional track drives or track events back roads uh, you know driving it driving how I'm supposed to be driving it uh, I don't baby the car and the car has never consumed any oil maybe I am the uh, you know I am the one exception that has a good good engine but uh, you know just I like to at least check the oil, make sure that the oil levels are okay every 5,000 miles. Oh, I'm sorry, every uh, every 500 miles, uh, and I do the oil change every 1,000 miles. Also, uh, it's gonna be the. A lot of people don't do this. I actually have a video on how to change it, but it's gonna be your fuel filter on the car. Uh, GT 500s and GT 350s, the oil filter you're supposed to change it every 30,000 miles. So obviously, if you do it every uh, 25,000, that's okay. Uh, you know, it's preventative maintenance, but it is something that is gonna be affecting your performance. Alrighty, so another thing that I'm gonna be talking about is the modifications that you do to your car uh, that are gonna take some of the mileage away and some of the lifespan away from your car. Uh, you know, nowadays, uh, two steps have made a comeback and uh, you know sitting there and revving your engine just to be able to see some flame shooting out the back have made a comeback and there's people you know revving their cars all the time and uh, you know I even see it on Shelby's uh, so I mean if you're gonna be doing something to your car um, also you know whenever you go ahead and you boost your car uh, supercharger turbocharger or even uh, you know centrifugal you are putting a lot of stress on the on the motor uh, even if you keep it at something conservative like 8 to 10 psi uh, you're still gonna have that you know in the back of my mind uh, or in the back of your mind that damn now I have to be worried about so many things fuel spark uh, things you know coming on un undone like couplers you know there's so much things that you need to be worrying about uh, whenever you boost your car, I'm not saying I'm not discouraging you from doing it because I actually did it. I actually did it on my uh, previous Mustang GT. It had a Paxson supercharger making, you know, uh, 10 psi on 93 octane. And even though I did all the preventative stuff, I got bigger injectors and everything, and I kept it at a moderate boost level, the car still uh, damaged the piston uh, rings. So, I mean, anything can happen everything is made at a you know at Ford you know it's, we're not talking McLaren over here so I mean it though the Shelby's they the engines are built by hand um, you still run into that issue where hey you know you're putting boost through uh, NA engine and anything can really happen uh, so I encourage you guys that if you're gonna boost your vehicle just make sure that you have a backup plan in case something was to go wrong whether it being 
you know, some money saved up on the backside. Uh, that way you, you're not just sitting with a car and doing, if you're still owing on your car, you're not just paying for a car that, you know, you gotta let it sit for a year or two or half a year just so that you can get the car back up and running. Um, uh, on my car, basically you can look at it, it looks stock, other than the simple fact that I got the end gauge right there next to my gauges, because I like to monitor spark. And talking about the tune and what type of tunes you go with, let's say if you go ahead and go with to your local uh, tuner where you live, uh, they are gonna choose a tune where they're gonna give you the max horsepower, max spark, and after a certain point, spark isn't really doing anything for you uh, but i see some cars out there that yeah although they are fast um, you know i can guarantee you that their hot tune that they have they're running on there isn't really optimal for their car's longevity i much rather have i much rather sacrifice 10 to 15 horsepower than having um, you know those 15 horsepower and taking away you know a lot of a lot of lifespan on my engine because after bidding on it for some for so long, you know, you are gonna start seeing some uh, worn out parts. All right, so the last thing that I wanted to go ahead and discuss and show you guys is gonna be um, two is things that I've dealt with in the past. Uh, and one is just a common issue that I myself haven't run into. This motor being a flat plane crane creates a lot of vibration. And so back, uh, maybe about whenever the car had about 40,000 miles or so I started seeing a little bit of an oil drip and I thought what it was it, I thought it was the oil filter but I remember I always torque that filter uh, for recommends about 18 uh, pounds to, of torque on the oil filter mine is the uh, mine is not the cartridge style mine is gonna be the one that you screw in so the older version um, but you know, I, I always make sure that that's really, really tight, so that way I don't have any uh, it getting loose or anything like that on me. But I did experience. Uh, I thought it was leaking from the filter, but it happened to be the oil pressure sensor. Uh, the, your oil pressure sensor. So it's gonna the filter is gonna be at the bottom, towards the bottom, and the oil pressure sensor is right up here. Um, in order to get to it, I had to remove my alternator take that off and then I had access to my oil pressure sensor that backed away on its own so whenever I went ahead and checked it I could actually just loosen it up with my fingers so I went ahead and tightened that up again you know I haven't had any issues with that anymore but it is a possibility uh, it would be a good idea for you guys to just check it um, that way make sure that it's tight also another thing is gonna be your valve covers the valve covers on these cars they tend to get the, the screws tend to back up uh, in some cases uh, because of the amounts of vibration. Another thing is gonna be the fact that it loves to mess up exhausts. Not not so much a cat back exhaust, but I, I have uh, shifted catalytes on my vehicle and I mean, it's blown the welds once already. And before I had these catalytes, I, just had, I had just gone to a muffler shop and they had just, you know, removed them and it blew those wells about two times before that. So they, um, if, you, if you're thinking about getting headers, I'm not discouraging you, just make sure that they come with a good warranty. That way, if it does happen, uh, you can go ahead and get your money back. And then, or a different, or, or a replacement header. And then another thing, the last thing that I wanted to say is gonna be get yourself a passenger side oil catch can. Uh, because it doesn't matter the brand, you know, uh, I just went with this one because it's nice and black and it uh, and it matches my in, uh, my engine bay. But you know, get yourself one of those because it's gonna be trapping all that bypass oil. Uh, the one on the driver's side, it, you don't have to get that one. That one stays clean. That one doesn't get any bypass. So it's a waste of money to get that one. You just the passenger side oil catch can. And then um, another thing is just gonna be your air filter. You know, they sell some at Stita. Uh, that are some replacement ones and they just allow your engine to flow a little bit better so like i said guys uh just keep up the maintenance on your car you don't have to worry about the cars blowing up on you uh, i know if you're somebody that is trying to get into a shelby gt350 don't be discouraged i was at, i was very very scared getting into it not knowing what, what was going to happen it being a gen 1 voodoo i was even more scared but 
at the end of the day, the car has treated me so nicely. Um, I've kept it on the mild side. I haven't done crazy modifications, as you can see, because of that reason. I don't want to be worrying about uh, anything. I don't want to be worrying about too many things. I just want to drive the car, beat the crap out of it when I want to, and not have to worry in the back of my mind, oh my God, something's going to happen, you know? So just keep that in mind. Keep checking the oil. Keep putting premium gas in it. Keep putting what Ford recommends you to put as far as the brand of oil that's what that's what I suggest you can do whatever you want but uh, I just stick with motorcraft and uh, yeah thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one